Atwood at the State Department, thanks so much. And joining us now is the Republican Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall. Also with us, Marine Sergeant Tyler Vargas Andrews, a 25-year-old active duty Marine who was severely wounded at Kabul Airport's Abbey Gate bombing on August 26, 2021, where 13 U.S. service members were killed. Sergeant Vargas Andrews is now a, a double amputee. Um, Sergeant uh, Vargas Andrews, let me start with you. First of all, let me just say, I heard your testimony a few weeks ago, and um, I have a lot of reverence for what you do, and thank you for your service and the sacrifice you've made. Uh, it, it can't be easy, um, but there are a lot of Americans, I'm sure a lot of viewers right now, who appreciate what, what you've done more than you can ever possibly know. That means a lot, Jake. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> um, it's, it's something that needs to be done, and uh, you know, I have the ability to do it, so it is my responsibility to do so. Let me, let me uh, roll some of your moving testimony from two weeks ago on Capitol Hill. My body was overwhelmed from the trauma of the blast. My abdomen had been ripped open. Every inch of my exposed body, except for my face, took ball bearings and shrapnel. The withdrawal, <clears throat> the withdrawal was a catastrophe in my opinion. And there was an ex inexcusable lack of accountability and negligence. The 11 Marines, one sailor, <clears throat> and one soldier that were murdered that day have not been answered for. <clears throat> so you refer there to an inexcusable lack of accountability. What does accountability look like for you? <clears throat> for me, accountability looks like, um, you know, re regardless of who's in what leadership roles um, in our military or our government, um, you know, that, those people are responsible for, for the lives that they send overseas, um, you know, the the lives that, that are lost, the lives that are impacted, and I mean, mentally and physically, um, as well as the families. I think accountability looks like, you know, one, an answer for myself and the men and women that I served with as to why our rules of engagement were not clear, um, <clears throat> why we weren't given some of those answers in, in the situation that we're in in Afghanistan at Abbey Gate. Um, yeah, I would say those are the, those are the largest ones. That's perfectly reasonable. Uh, Chairman McCall, um, today you vowed to get answers going, quote, all the way up the chain if you need to. Retired General Frank McKenzie, the commander who oversaw the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, has criticized both Trump and Biden for what occurred. <clears throat> Do you mean that far up the chain? Well, the rules of engagement go all the way up to the National Security Council. Uh, it appeared from the testimony there were no rules of engagement on the ground at HKIA, surrounded by the Taliban. HKIA is a, the, the, the airport. airport in, in yeah. Kabul. And, and I think most importantly, you know, Tyler saw the suicide bomber in his sights. He got his team together. He got the PSYOPs intelligence team. They identified him as the suicide bomber uh, through an intelligence bulletin and then ran it up to his commanding officer, who then replied, you don't have uh, permission to engage uh, because I don't have that authority. Well. And then they said, well, who has that authority? He couldn't answer that question. Yeah. So I want to go as far, I don't know how high this goes, but the idea he's not giving permission to engage, and then hours later, the bomb goes off. You have 13 servicemen and women killed, including we saw the mother of, of uh, you know, Nicole G. Um, 140 Afghans and 50 injured, including... Tyler, who obviously doesn't have a leg, arm, has had almost 50 surgeries. Somebody's got to be held accountable. So, uh, Sergeant Vargas Andrews, um, you posted this picture uh, uh, one year uh, after 13 of your fellow service members were killed in action, if we could put that picture up, um, visiting one of the graves. Have you been in touch with their families um, or the families of, of other service members that you were there with? What, what are you hearing from them? Yes, <clears throat> I have. Um, you know, I can't say that I keep an extremely close relationship with all of them. Um, but, you know, I talk to the ones that reach out and the ones that I can um, as much as I'm able to. Um, you know, I think it's, from what I've been told by multiple um, parents of the Killed in Action, uh, family, friends, is that, you know, there's a thank you for being that voice for their, you know, the ones that they lost. And for me, it's not a thanks that I ever need. Um, they, they want answers more than I want answers. Um, and that's not to downplay how badly I want to advocate for, for the men and women that I served with, but, um, you know, there's, there's not many other people to turn to than, you know, Chairman McCall and, and those, of, those, of, those congressmen and women who have reached out to us. 
Yeah, no, you're serving in, a, obviously, a, in critical role for these individuals. Um, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, General Mark Milley, testified before the House Appropriations Committee today. He declined mm -hmm. to, blame blaze, to place blame on any one administration. Uh, he took a more holistic view, um, saying that the, the, quote, strategic failure of Afghanistan was the culmination of decisions over 20 years. Um, what's your response to that? Well, I do think uh, there are a lot of bad decisions made throughout the 20 years. But the one decision that this president made was to evacuate. And the problem is he didn't really have a plan of evacuation. So when I got briefed by the Department of Defense, the intelligence community, it was a very grim picture. And then when I talked to the State Department, a complete lack of preparation. That's precisely why I want this dissenting cable that came from the embassy in Kabul. 23 State Department employees uh, registering dissent with a policy of the administration is a very extraordinary event. Uh, this is the one document, as it was reported, that they are not willing to turn over. Uh, I think the American people deserve to know what was in that. I think the veterans deserve to know what was in that and the Gold Star Mothers. And if it is not provided by Close of Business Monday, uh, I will serve that subpoena. So you're not actually a veteran. You're uh, still an active duty uh, nice. uh, Marine. Um, uh, and I wonder if you're getting any pushback uh, for being as outspoken as you are. I hope you're not, but are you? No, I'm, I'm not. Um, <clears throat> honestly, I've had full support, um, you know, from, from the bottom of the Marine Corps to the top. Um, I can't say anything bad about, about that at all. I've, I've, they've helped me along the way, given me those outlets through the Pentagon to talk to and legal aid and assistance as well, um, knowing and expressing that they ha I have... You know, I can speak about what happened to me and what happened to the men and women that I served with. I've never been told otherwise. So, All right, Marine Sergeant Tyler Vargas Andrews and Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall. Thanks to both of you. I really appreciate your being here. I especially appreciate your ability.